Hey, how we doing? You're probably thinking, what's JJ doing down here? Well, can you see all these? Do you know what these are? Well, this woodland is covered in these. Going up to about 15 to 18 inches high. And about a month, month and a half ago, this was a carpet of bluebells. And then what happens after the flowers have had their time and their bluebell splendor, that brilliance that covers the, the woodland floor and a carpet of the spectacle that I just love. This is the end result. These go to seed and these are the seed pods. These are now dormant and then they'll disperse the seeds, draw the nutrition back down into the ground, the nutrients, so that next year we can have another amazing spectacle. If I just come up slowly, you can just see all around, all around as I come up everywhere, absolutely everywhere is like that with the bluebells. And that gives you a oh, lint on the floor and I'm underneath a load of sweet chestnut. And the, the, the conker sort of shells and that such still on the ground and they're oh, spiny in the hands. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, so that grows up to about 15 to 18 inches high. And then after that, we've got growing up to about four foot high is the bracken. And the bracken is a resplendent green and that at the moment. And I'm going to walk through there in a minute. And then just above that, you've got the browse line. The browse line on the trees. So it's just green everywhere you go. So when you're in the woods and that at the moment, tread carefully if you've had that bluebell carpet across the wooden floor. And as you're walking through the, the bracken, just be really careful because a lot of wildlife, especially deer and the young deer, the young fawns and that hide in the bracken at this time of day. So I'm going to carry on walking across to my spot in the woods and uh, catch up with you in a bit. Bracken grows to about five to six feet high, not three or four foot. Apologies about that. This is an open area along here and normally I would just walk straight across it but because the bracken is so high there could be deer, young deer and that hiding in there and that's why I'm trying to keep my voice down even as a plane's about to go over the top of me and at this time of year I really try to stick to the paths that are clear and open not traipsing across all the bracken or any wildflowers, any meadows that are out there And that's really important so that your impact on, on where you are, the area that you're using and frequenting isn't high. You should try and keep your disturbance to a minimum. Oh, I've got soot on my nose. <laughs> um, yeah, try and keep your, your footfall to the paths that are really well used. I don't want to go traipsing across through there and that. I'll be making a path, I'll be creating a noise and a racket and that'll be disturbing any wildlife that I'm actually hoping to see. Also walking through all that, that's going to send loads of bugs and bitey things up and we don't need that this time of year, trying not to get bitten. So yeah, just a little sort of wildlife, you know, sort of tip there, you know, as much as you just want to be able to walk where you can, sometimes it's just best not to do that. I'm going to get going, catch you in a bit. That bit where the glare is, so that's where I'm going to pitch. It's a place I generally always come to in this wood and pitch the lavu or half lavu in this, this instance. It's generally an area where I see the deer quite a lot. 
I already have seen the deer from a distance. Once you start to try and approach to get a bit closer, but they see you well before you can even get close enough to get decent picks. There's always a compromise when you're, when you're moving across. I've had to move across a couple of hundred meters of ground, and at this time of year, the leaf litter is so dry, it makes so much noise. And of course, as I said, you know, making your way through the bracken can make a lot of noise and cause disturbance. And there's always that compromise, you know, do you spend like five minutes walking as quickly as you can, making even more noise to get to your spot, or do you just walk really quietly and bring that noise to a minimum, but obviously that noise will carry on for a little bit longer. And now that I'm over near my spot, I'm just trying to sort of calm myself down slow my movement down speak in softer tones because I do generally always see the deer around here and whether that happens on camera today I don't know you have seen it in the past but as I approach my spot I like to take a few minutes just to have a really good look around especially now that we've got that browse line you're only able to see you know a couple of feet from the bottom of the canopy to around that sort of bracken line so you might only just see the head of a deer but they are out there and so I'm just going to go over to my spot and just chill quickly get myself set up as quietly as possible and then I use that half rivu as a bit of a backdrop and that and it kind of gives me a little bit of shelter but also disguises me as I sit in it so let's get over there I am nicely set up. Got the camera, phone set away just so you get the larvae in. So I hope you can hear me. I'm trying to speak in hushed tones, not too loud. I've been here for a while, I've settled down. And as you see, I've actually got this pitched a little bit higher than I normally would. That's because I can sit up in it. And as you see there, if I sit right in the back of it, I kind of pretty much blend into it, I disappear. You know, I can pull my peak down a little bit more. I can roll my sleeves down and I'll just blend in. I've got a long sleeved shirt with a hood. If you, I want to quickly put it on. I can just whack it over the back, put the hood on, hood on just to disguise my shoulders and above. the airplane would, would you expect? You're only a couple of miles from the airport. As I said, when I was making my way over, I was trying to be as quiet as possible. But when the airplanes are going over, I can actually move a little bit quicker because that airplane noise disguises my noise and the footfall. And I've come here, I've set up. Do you know these two poles that I've got in the bipod with a ridge line going through the tree that's in the front? I've been using these now for about three years and I keep them up in the tree. This is where you are looking at me. They're nicely dried out. So I don't have to go looking around for long staves that I can use as a bipod. I've got these here, they're well hidden. And as soon as I come here, I clear away the leaf litter for where I'm gonna, if I light the fire with a fire box stove. Put the ground sheet down and I clear that away as quickly as I can. So once I'm here, I'm all set in. 
I knew I was going to come up here today. I know that I'm, I'm hoping to see some deer. Even on my walk out, I might see them, but there's little things that I've done. So the wind is coming from your direction towards me. So my, my scent, my odor is not going forwards to where the deer or the wildlife may be. I haven't used any, you know, like aftershave or deodorant because animals are very perceptive, perceptive to, to smell, you know. Their, their, their sense of smell is a lot more heightened than ours is. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as natural as possible. And I'll just sit here and I'll just wait a while. So I've got the wind direction in my favor. Do you know what, even if I don't see anything today, I know that I've done everything possible to put myself in the best position. I, I minimize my impact. You know, if I suddenly see like a little herd of deer coming away, although I've got my firebox stove and that's set up, I'll just remove the kettle and the bottle, which is shiny and silver, and just put them quietly behind my pack, which is here, which you can barely see. And while I'm here, I'm just scanning. I'm not making really quick movements. I'm just trying to be as quiet as possible. And just kind of blend in. So just a few little tips for, you know, minimizing your impact when you're in a woodland position, even if you're not out to observe wildlife. If you're not here to observe wildlife, you just want to enjoy some woodland time, the best thing to do is just be as quiet as possible, be as natural as possible. Don't make loud noises, don't make brash, rash movements. Disguise yourself, blend yourself in. Now the, the, the clothing that I'm wearing today is a lot lighter green than what I would normally wear. During the autumn and winter I use the Fowl Raven Lapland Hybrid sort of trousers, you know, jacket, number eight anorak jacket and a darker shirt. And because all the bracken's out here at the moment, it's very green. I'm wearing a green that kind of blends in well with the lavu, but also my surroundings. So yeah, there you go. I'm just happy being in this environment. You know, I haven't seen a single soul, but if someone was to walk past now, they wouldn't even know I was here. They wouldn't even know I was here and that's all you can ask for. So that's spot on. So I'm going to sit back, I'm going to enjoy my bit of time here and um, if I see any wildlife and I can try and get it on film, I will, but if not, it's not a problem, it's not always about that. And I won't light a fire or the firebox stove until I know that I'm done looking out for wildlife because again that wood smoke will alert them to my presence. So it's only at that point where I'm no longer focusing on looking out for the wildlife that I will light the firebox stove if I do today. So there you go. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you like this video. Catch you again soon. Bye.